Oh, uh, yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a mess on Friday. So let me just write that down. And that was the 22nd. All right. Let's see. So, um, DFFML. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. So let's see. It looks like we don't have Sudhancho on the phone yet. We have Sudarsana. I see this is, yeah, okay. So it looks like you're in progress on this. Is there anything that you, uh, you need from me on this? Sarasna? Looks like you're un unmuted, but we can't hear you. No. You guys, can you guys hear? Uh, no. Okay. okay. Um, let's see. All right. Well, um, what have you guys been up to? Saksham, do you want to go uh, first? Did, uh, yeah, I, I started working on that. Yeah, so I don't have much to share. I started working on this. Uh, on the issues that we uh, talked about in the previous two previous meeting, this right. week was totally mess for me. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I will I will share. Am I will open I the PR maybe tomorrow. Yes, you are. All right. Cool. That sounds good. Yeah. Just let us know Thank on you. Twitter or whatever. Um. All right. Cool. So, um, is there anything you want to talk about for this meeting, Himachu, or just sort of kind of soak up everything that's going on? Uh. Uh, yeah, no, uh, not not much with me. I'll just listen to what's going on. All right, cool. Um, all right, yeah, um, Sudarsana, um, so yeah, is there anything that you're sort of, like, what? how's it going with this one? Just in progress, or? Uh, uh, it is still in progress. All so right. uh, I have taken a scikit uh, as an example. Mm-hmm. And I tried to implement this on Psychic first. I just wanted to know whether, like, I'm going in the right direction. Uh, is this what is expected? Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, is this in simple model? Or where is this? Let's see. No, this is in regular model. So, basically, um, let's see. Uh, this part, not so much. Um, the main thing here is that we need to do this for every model, right? And take out the default and then fix all the examples and all the test cases so that they, they provide a model. Um, and then I'm not sure if we're actually going to have any changes in model itself. Uh, because in in model we are actually like setting it uh, like to be none if the self dot config doesn't have directory and also like uh, you have mentioned in the issue that we need to uh, when we are doing accuracy or uh, predict we need to make sure that we go back to that uh, same uh, directory path uh, even if the user doesn't give it while uh, using accuracy or predict so that's why I thought while training we could probably save it somewhere and then get back. But I'm not sure how exactly to. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so this yes, now I see what you're talking about. So yeah, we were setting it to none, which we shouldn't be doing. 
we should probably check if it exists though or actually let's see if it's a stir then do this if it's a path then set it so i don't think we actually were setting it to none here we probably want to leave that and then we probably don't need this class variable um, so let's see so i think and then i think let's go to that issue too um, let's see so da, da, da. okay yeah we may also need to save the original config yeah so and i think that was in reference to the fact that what we're going to do is um when we're training uh let's see yeah when we're training uh we might pass certain parameters that we use to build the model like um let's see uh, where's a good example of this uh, maybe in scikit models actually no come on that didn't take me where i wanted to go so uh, no this is a no it's like it it's like it based up Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Um well this one they're actually just gonna load the job lib um serialized one, so that's not really an issue. But I think if we go into so model tensorflow Okay, and this one has like I think hidden layers is going to be a factor here. Um, so this is going to be, I guess it's going to be specific to the models, but the idea is that we're going to get rid of anything where we're doing um, like hashing of feature names to be able to determine what the directory is. So we're going to get rid of this kind of stuff um, because we're going to require that the, the user always supply the directory um, uh, and get rid of the default values. And so then within that directory, um, let's see. So, uh, like for example, I think with this one, where's hidden? So yeah, for this one, yeah, they load. We load from parent config dot hidden, and this happens any time we. Um, Basically, if you don't specify the same hidden values and then you load that model with this um, from disk, oh gosh, come back, um, then it's going to explode. TensorFlow will give you some weird errors. So in this case, I think this is one of those cases where we probably want to do, when we're figuring out what the path to the model is, uh, let's see, where is that? So here we sort of do, uh, wait, model dir okay yeah so we look at model dir so we probably have to do something here where we um before we load this model we look in where our directory is and we load the config um the previously given config and we we grab the hidden value from that or something and we check that you know if the hidden value is the default um uh We'd, we'd want to raise an error if the value that is given in the value that exists in the config is not the default and not the saved value. Um, otherwise, we just use the saved value. Um, right, so, so if someone does accuracy and they try to specify a different amount of hidden layers, um, now that model that's saved on disk isn't going to work. Um, and so we should just throw an error right there saying like, hey, this isn't going to work. Uh, but this is sort of like on a case-by-case -case basis for different models. Like with TensorFlow, you're going to want to export the config or at least the hidden value to something within that directory that's supplied. Um, and with other ones, you're going to have to do it sort of case-by-case -case and figure out how the how is the model built and then what parameters do I need to save right to that directory. Um, and then 
uh, you know, when, when do I load them back and, and how do I check them, right? So, for example, with this one, it was uh, if the hidden direct or if the hidden hidden, hidden units is not um, if the hidden units is not the default and it's not the saved one, then you tried to specify different hidden units for um, for an already trained model and that's not going to work. So then you need to throw an error. Does that sort of make sense? Uh, yeah, so like, but here, like if a model parameter is passed, you're just returning the model as it is, right? Only if when a model is not there, then you're just loading the model with the same configuration as before. So what if the model that is passed doesn't have the same directory as like, or the hidden units as the, uh, like, uh, the ones that we defined before? Well, so that's what I'm saying is basically what we'll want to do is we'll want to add some code, um, um, let's see, is this specified? Okay, maybe not. Um, so we'll want to add some code that basically exports this config um, and saves it to like a JSON within the directory. And then when we go here, and so this, because this is this will happen every time um, the model is loaded for the first time, right? So between different command line invocations, uh, this is going to, we're, we're going to, hit this code here um, and so we need to save like but when we hit this code we'll want to dump the config to the directory right to this some kind of json file within the directory and then right before we'll want to load it back and then we'll say okay like if this config that i found in the directory um is not like if the hidden units don't match what I was provided in my config, right? So if I did the train command, I came in, I dumped the JSON of the config to this directory, and then I set, you know, model dir equals that directory to. Um, then I uh, then I come in and I do the accuracy command. Well, I'm going to come in and now since the first time I saved the config self dot parent dot config to the directory. Um, I'm going to load that back in, and then I say, "Okay, does the um, does the does the hidden does the parts of the config that I care about match?" Right. So, do the uh, hidden units match what they're supposed to be? Um, and if they if you try to specify a different value, like so, if self dot dot config dot hidden does not equal the default value and it does not equal the value given within the saved config for the first time we came through with the training then we're going to raise raise an error saying that hey this is not going to work i mean we don't have to raise an error because it will blow up almost instantly tensor but it's the way the tensorflow explodes and maybe some of these other libraries is not intuitive on what the hell happened so we're going to want to uh, do that right now or right here right before we instantiate the model did that make more sense or I may not be explaining this the best. Yeah, way. yeah, I'm I'm kind of clear now. Like, okay. uh, so like I just have to load like uh, have this config uh, stored as a JSON in the like same directory path. Yeah, and then later when this uh, model is again getting called, I need to refer to that and make sure the parameters are same. If not, like I need to. Uh, either create, uh, I need to like exit, right? I need to create an error. Yeah, yeah, raise an error basically saying, hey, the thing you're about okay. to do is not going to work. So we're going to raise an error right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sure. Exactly. So okay. cool. And okay. so thank I think you. that's, yeah, well, thank you. Um, so let's, um, yeah, so with Scikit, I think this is basically going to just be a case of, I don't think they have, well, yeah, the Scikit ones, they actually just save and load the model. Like they, they, we instantiate the model and then we basically just pickle it so it has all the properties so you won't have to worry about that with scikit you're just going to need to remove the default here and then you're going to have to do things like you know in all the tests and all the examples you're going to want to go through and make sure that there's now a dash model dash directory within the command line examples and that the the python tests are actually specifying the directory and these things will blow up because they don't have a default parameter anymore so it's going to be very obvious um where <laughs> what where where you're going to need to go put them because um, the tests will start failing um but yeah i guess the, the place where it's not going to be oh, obvious okay. is in the okay. documentation you're going to want to look through for instances of of you know the the you know scikit model or whatever and 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 see um if if there was uh if there's a place where we wrote command line commands that that need to be changed 
Okay, sure. Uh, what about the change in the model? Like, uh, except that uh, self dot directory, I will remove that. I don't know if we uh, need this 106, change. 106. Uh, let's see okay, this one. Okay, sure. Yeah, because this is going to assume that. So, so the thing is that we can't like what we're doing is we. So because this is sort of generic, right? So someone doesn't, and I think I can't remember which one. Um, but so the because things are deriving from model, we're sort of doing some helper stuff here, where if they add a directory a config or directory parameter to config will create it um but you know someone might create a model where they have you know two different directories and they don't actually call it directory in their config but then they need to be responsible for creating it we're just doing some sort of helper stuff here to create directories for people if when they create their model they don't they they name the config parameter directory um so this is this is stuff but that's why we're checking it. That's why we have the none in there because if they didn't have directory, basically, if we don't have none, then if you define a model that doesn't have a directory parameter and its or directory property in its config, then we're going to hit errors. And we, models don't necessarily have to define a directory property. Um, what we're doing here is saying that if they do define a directory property, it can't have a default value. That's that's what we're doing here. Um, okay okay yeah that makes sense okay yeah. cool sweet is there anything else then or i'll just let you keep chugging on this uh no no sweet. i'm good all right thank great. you all right sweet thank you okay so let's write some notes so uh, let's see working on um, sakshan do you want to start uh go ahead and start start giving me the What's up on the unified config? Yeah, uh, I think I fixed most of the errors apart from the main error, which because of which we have to do dashes tests. Yeah, yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> and and there are some weird tests failing in should I and HTTP ser ser yeah, okay, service yeah. HTTP. Let's see. Uh, have you merged left master recently? Uh, yes, I'm, uh, I've updated the branch, and then I started uh, back working on it. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Let me just make a note here. So. Okay, working on... Sorry, removing. So Stresno was working on removing default values um, from directory parameters of models. And on to, um, uh, same. Uh, as last time. And then such. Um, okay. So let's read the CI here. One second. Uh. Oh, sorry, I'm having bad allergies today. All right, let's see. Oh, geez. Oh, no. What are you guys doing? Crazy test cases. What is this? Hmm. Let's see. Did you change stuff in Should I? Yeah, I've changed uh, the oh. CLI stuff in Should I and HTTP. Okay. Well, there we go. That's, that's that explains it. I was like, okay, you didn't change anything here. What the hell is going on? All right. Let's see. Um, should I? Yeah. This is so exciting. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Let's see. Uh, 
And then eventually we're going to have to figure out how the hell to take these underscores to take things with underscores. This will be this will be in the future, but take things with underscores and turn them into dashes so it doesn't look weird. Okay. Missing type for course domain. Default factory. Weird. Okay, let's see. Let's check this one out first. Let's see if I can pull this down. Or did you find anything on that uh, on the main issue of this pull request that the test failing because of unit testing? Oh, oh, uh, I haven't looked. This is an issue that I run into every once in a while, and I don't know what causes it. And I've run into it on several different projects, and I cannot make heads or tails of what the hell is going on. It has to do. I've traced through the code, and what's going on is that unit test the unit test framework is in i haven't traced through it far enough to know exactly what's going on but if you if you trace through the code at least starting at where it's it's failing the unit test framework is trying to instantiate that thing as if it's a test case class right and the config classes, yeah right? it's the in this instance yeah it's the config method um, or the config function within dffml slash base. For some reason, it got some wires crossed, and it thinks it's a test case class, and it's trying to instantiate the test case class. And so that's where our, our problem is coming from here. Um, and I don't know what the what the hell is up with that. Um, and but I've noticed that when you do uh, when you specify just the test directory, it doesn't do it. So yeah, I'm. I've been stumped on what the hell this one is, and it's happened to me with several things before. It happened to me with the accuracy class one time. It's. It doesn't make any sense to me at the moment, um, and I, I haven't been able to figure out what the hell it is. Um, but we will figure it out. Um, uh, let's see. Um, actually, the best way to figure it out may be to switch to. I don't know if you guys have probably seen that message that it keeps saying. You know that the uh, that the unit test API is going to be changed. The, depre the depre yeah, depreciation. Yeah, the deprecation warning. Yeah, I went through and I looked. I was reading the whole thread the other day. And, uh, and yeah, um, that's, uh, yeah, that thing, that's, anyways, that, that, that thing is, uh, apparently they were like, just to guys give you guys some background on it, but basically people were like, well, this was like the closest thing to the standard way to do testing as there was, but we want to get rid of it because something about setup tools and installing packages, and you might have noticed it creates this .eggs directory where it downloads all the dependencies to. Um, and uh, so, yeah, basically they're getting rid of it, um, and we're a little late to the conversation. So that's annoying. Um set upstream to uh, origin um, master. Yeah? Sean, I, um, I just have a doubt. Like, why don't we, like, have any behavioral testing in our application? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like, I heard, like, this uh, way of testing, like, uh, called behavioral testing. I'm not really familiar with it. Uh, but then it's more, like, uh, easier, like, kind of, like, unit test is more, like, from the coder's perspective, right? So, uh -huh. behavioral test is, like, how, like, a, a function, whether it works as if, like, you expect it to work. And uh, I think there is a Python package called behave uh, that does it for you. I'm not really, like, uh, familiar with it, but I've just been uh, You've like, been hearing, hearing about, about it. the firm. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it aligns with what we have, what we are working on, but just uh, throwing it out here. Yeah. Oh, let's check it out. I haven't heard of this type of thing. Um. Behave. Is this the one? 
Iya, telepon. Oh, this is like JavaScript people love this. Um, yeah, this is like basically okay. So this is like um, if you have done um, okay. So if you've done Node.js programming, uh, where is it? Yeah, Mocha. Everybody loves this thing, and it looks exactly like that. Um, so, yeah, they do this type of stuff, right? And it's like, okay, blah, 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 blah. And it, it looks the same way. Um, and so it's just like another, I mean, it's just another way that you can write tests, right? Um, it's just sort of like, and it's more structured in like, um, it's more structured sort of like a regular language, like English or something, right? Um, so when when things break, it's sort of like, oh, well, what happened? Well, it, it sort of spells out to you what, was, uh, what you were trying to do, and then the test fits exactly into that English language description. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's... Yeah. Um, is that what this is? Let's see. It looks exactly like that node one, and which is what's leading me to believe that. But let's see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll come back to the stuff section. I just wanted to see this. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh... Interesting. Or wait, oh, there was an explanation. Agile development technique. I see. Oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense too. Yeah, like so. Morgan, Morgan Stanley is going agile, and they have invested a lot in like uh, taking the entire firm agile. So that's that why I'm, I'm like hearing all these things at the phone. Yeah. Yeah, that's that makes that makes sense because uh, yeah, I know I know some people who are like they've done the same thing where it's like okay, everybody gets agile training, and now it's like that's what we're doing now, right? And and Intel is not like that. <laughs> Intel's not that organized. Um, so I don't know. I don't know most about this stuff. Um, let's see if there's some more information. It looks like it could be interesting. Um, let's see. I... Okay, here we go. Documentation. I mean, I love testing. Testing helps us all have code that works. So that's always good. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess we'll, let's, let's just put this in the notes and we can sort of investigate it. Uh, so let's investigate. So my, the one thing is that I hesitate to bring in... Uh, oh, philosophy. Perfect. Okay. So wow, okay. <laughs> behavior driven development is an agile software development technique that encourages collaboration between developers, QA and non-technical or business production, blah, 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 blah. The response to test driven development, which including acceptance test or customer test driven development practices is found in extreme programming. It has evolved over the past few years. Um, Second generation outside in poll based blah 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 buzzword buzzword buzzword. Um obtaining clear understanding of desired software behavior through discussion with stakeholders, uh writing test cases in natural language. Okay, that's what I was saying, that non programmers can read. Behavior driven yeah. developers use their native language in combination with the ubiquitous language of domain driven design to describe the purpose and benefit of their code. This allows the developers to focus on why code should be created rather than the technical details and minimizes translation between the technical language in which the code is written and their brain. Okay, establishing goals. Da, da, da. Okay. 
So scenario. Refund item should be returned to stock. Given a customer previously bought a black sweater from me and I ha currently have three black sweaters left in stock, when he returns the sweater for a refund, then I should have four black sweaters in stock. Okay, I see. So basically everything is written like this and then so your yeah, business people second. give you this. So yeah, so you say the business people give you something like this and then you write the test cases so that they end up like this and then everyone can understand what the output is. Um, scenario, new lists are empty. New lists, this should be empty. Okay, so. Hey, Sutanchu. How's it going? Okay, and okay. So, I mean, this looks interesting. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this is something yeah, that will end Yeah, I'm not up. sure if it's going to fit in ours. Yeah, like, I mean, it makes sense to have it in a bigger form where we have, like, a QA people. And, like, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of developers, <laughs> I'm not sure, yeah. Um, I mean, it looks it looks interesting. It definitely looks like some of the stuff that the Node.js people like. Um, my biggest question is sort of, does this support async code? Um Let's see. I mean, it definitely looks cool, but I'm not sure if it's worth the investment at this point to switch over or to start using some of this stuff. Um, it could be, but I guess if you sort of, if you find a use case for it and you think that it's interesting, you could always sort of like, you know, if you, if you have something in mind at some point and, and you want to sort of throw up, hey, this is how we how I made this um, sort of easier, more clear to test, then then definitely go for it. Let's see. Sakshan. OK, great. Uh, John, can you check the I, yes, message? Yes, I that. Thank you. Async. Testing async IO frameworks. OK. All right, yeah, so it looks like it, it supports async stuff. So that's good. Sorry, I just want to understand this because testing stuff is important. Uh, yeah, this could be cool. Hmm. Okay, so basically my thoughts on this right now are this looks interesting. Um, we don't have any sort of project management beyond me making um, uh, milestones and labels. So, um, so, <laughs> yeah. so, so this is, this is something I think we will put, let's see, let's, so let's add an issue under the on. So I recently made this milestone called ongoing. Um, so, uh, you're all testing. So, so investigated behavioral testing. Um, behave Python. Okay. And so I recently made this, um, ongoing milestone. 
um, which is just to track um, where to go. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? All right. Um, the idea is that if we have sort of ideas or long-term things, um, or just like things that are always around, then we can throw them under ongoing. Um, like so, these ones, these ones, when we had questions and we decided to do them or not do them, and I can't remember which one. This one we decided to do. This one we decided not to do. I threw them under ongoing. Um, and so, if you guys have things that are like, hey, I maybe think that this is going to be helpful in the future, you can create an issue, and we'll just throw it under the ongoing milestones. So that can kind of like help us track, um, you know, longer term things that we're not sure where they fit in yet. Um, so feel free to, uh, to, to create issues and then just let me know to put that milestone on them. So, uh, feel free to create and don't just feel free, please do if you think of things. So feel free to create, uh, use create issues if you think of ongoing or of longer term things that might be helpful in the future um, but not sure where they fit in um, timeline wise or if they're just something that we should keep in mind some info we should keep in mind because the issue board is really just our way of like you know tracking all of our thoughts on things right and and all of the all of the stuff that might get done or maybe we'll get done or maybe should get done and we don't know yet right and then if it gets done we close the issue so so we can put whatever we want on there um so let's see um so Real quick, because Saksham, I suspect we're about to dive into this for a little bit here. Um, um, Sudhanshu, um, let's see, are you, how is this going? Is this yeah, so pretty much done here? Actually, I wanted you to review it. Okay, cool. Let's see. Yeah, it's almost done, and I've also updated the docs. Okay. And like, there are many changes which has to be made to the tests, so I also updated some of the tests. Great, great. Okay, let's see. Um, perfect. Okay, let's see. I wish I would sort of just display the new diff. Um, okay. So. Let's skip down to the pipeline ones. Okay, so. Tools, safety, bandit. Okay, plan, create the package, static analysis tools, set up, safety operation, write a test for it, run the test. Okay. Band it. Band it. Okay, oh, we're going to need to update the, let's see, did we update the data flow? Okay, we're going to need to update the data flow here because um, this image, let's see. Yeah, okay, so this image is going to be out of date. Um, so, oops. Okay. Um, Okay, and okay, well, here are the steps to visualize the data flow. So we're going to need to update all of this as well in here. Um, okay, result, nice, very nice, looking good, looking good. Sweet, final result. Good, looks good. Any issues? Nice. 
things. Very nice, very nice, okay. Safety check. Got rid of these guys. Yeah, so here, like, two of the tests were moved into one test. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. Yes. Ah, oh, it's been doing that. It takes me all the way to the top when I expand something. Okay, right, so yeah, so results, results sticked. Results, results version. Nice. Okay. Um, okay, great. Uh, okay, assert, assert in. And it's going to take me to top again. Okay. Uh, package contents, clean up package. So, yeah, these are all now under this one. Okay. Um, let's renumber these two. So, because now it says three. So, let's see. Need to renumber. What is it? Zero, zero. Um, let's see, yeah, we got zero, zero, 002, I guess. Yeah, zero, zero, 002 and zero, zero, 003. Okay. Um, let's see. Sweet. Because, uh, yeah, we should have, what, it's package contents. Yeah, it's just the two operations now, basically. They grab the JSON and get the package contents and then the cleanup. Sweet. Yeah, that definitely simplifies that stuff. Um, okay. And then up here, we're going to need to um, we're going to need to re um, rerun through the visualizing the data flow uh, section and and update output there. Um, and let's see. So this is diagram showing data flow. This is the same thing that we were looking at. Should I data flow processing? And this is just should I data flow? So what is this? Is this a giant mess? Okay, yes, this is the larger one. Okay, so the difference between these is basically um, uh, so with this one Okay, so rerun through the visualizing data flow and update section output there. Um, then for this one, you're going to add, let's see, where'd that go? Uh, here. Okay, so for regenerating, for regenerating the, should I data flow? processing dot svg um, you're going to just have it be stage processing you're going to add that um, uh, you'll add stage processing to the command from visualizing okay um, and then, okay, and then, okay, so we need to sort of update these bullet points, I think, so, um, because we'll access the pipe API and get the JSON describing the package information, we extract the version and extract the URL, and then, so I think what we need yes, to do, yes, probably need to update it. Yeah, yes, something about this needs to be maybe just move this bullet point and this bullet point under here and then say and then this guy and this guy just stay under concurrently. Does that sound good? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Okay, cool. And then Let's see. Uh, okay, and then you updated this range here, right? Let's see. So, pipeline. 
Yeah, okay. 1 through 30. Um, take the URL. Let's see one second here. Um, so this is the first one through line 30, and this is, yes, the one where we're downloading the package URL. Um, so we should probably mention that, so, let's see, yeah, so, okay, let's say something like, Take the URL to the package source code. Because um, I don't think, yeah, we haven't really mentioned what URL yet, so let's talk about what URL. Download the source and extract it to. And uh, I'm going to butcher the 80 columns here, probably, to a temporary directory. Operation will take the URL to the package source. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's clear. Yeah, it's probably clear. Okay. And then 33 through 68. All right, great. Sweet. Nice job. Okay, yeah, so I think we just need to upgrade, update the diagrams and update that little spiel about the diagram. So let's just make a note. So, um, and then, oh, no, 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 no. Where's everything going? Okay. Um, okay, let's... Also update the bullet point list um, uh, and move. So let's see. This is a fun trick. So say you want to mess with some HTML. Um, let's see, you can basically just um, take this and move it around and then you can take a screenshot showing exactly what you want some of you guys might have noticed that i've done this um, to describe changes in the web ui um, or in the documentation website let's see come down here oh no no i've lost what i was doing okay I want this guy Currently, oops. So you basically just pop open the dev tools and you can start dragging things around. All right, yeah, so make it look like this. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay, let's see. Where did my screen check go? It just disappeared. All right. Okay, now let's dive in because um, this may end up being um, Saksham and I on the phone for a long time. So, okay. So, um, yes, okay, that's just the correct stuff. Okay. Sweet. Um, and then I'll just say comment. No, what happened? No, well, you know my comments. All right. All right. So, um, and this this might go on for a while. So, is there anyone else that that needs to uh, that needs to talk about anything today? Yeah, so uh, that's it from my side. Thank you cool. very much. Thank you. All right, so let's dive into this unified config stuff. Get check, fetch. Um, okay, so 
Okay, and I can show, let's see, let's open up that, um, where did that little thing go that we had, so, does the search work on this website? Let's find out, uh, sort of, question mark, okay. So, and we're seeing the issue in examples, should I? So this is how I set up the thing to run the CI locally, so let's see if it works. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll see what the error is and we can mess with stuff. So, okay, and where did the PR go? Great, I closed the PR. Oh, and I did, let's see, I don't think, well, if Hashim watches the meeting, which I don't know if he will, but we'll put in the meeting minutes that, let's see, uh, uh, the DAL, so the, there's some Intel people that Hashim is wrapping their library, um, and they sent me an email because I asked them, uh, how do you recommend saving and loading this thing? And, uh, and they sent me an email saying, hey, what are you guys doing? So they're from the machine learning. Uh, so you guys know that I'm I'm actually on the, so I'm in the open source group within Intel and I'm in the security team. Um, so uh, I'm actually not in the group that does all of the AI stuff. Um, the group that does all the AI stuff is sort of, they're pretty lower level, right? Because they're concerned with how do we, make how do we how do we take all the c code that runs ai libraries and and use specific processor instructions um well you guys know me and i'm more concerned with uh like you know let's let's actually use the machine learning and write some software um and so they're they implement this library and hashim is wrapping this library so that we'll be able to use it very easily um from dffml and they said hey what's going on um so i'll probably have a meeting with them and we can see we can see uh, what what they're up to, so that might be interesting to see if they they have any interest in what's going on over here, um, or maybe they just want to write C plus plus all day. Who knows? Um, so, but that's interesting stuff. So, right, people reached out to me. They're in Russia, I think. Okay, so here we go. Um, oh, no, should I got mad at us? Um, all right, all right, all right. Okay, we don't care about that right now. Um, use has no attribute targets. Uh, well, I can actually just. Okay. Okay, and this is specifically when he didn't blow up on the other one. All right. So, if you guys haven't seen this command, it's basically, it's kind of like the should I command, but basically we're, this is, we're pointing it, we're pointing things at git repos um, or at, um, or at uh, or at a git repo or at a directory and just running all of the things that Yash has been adding is should I in it. Um, so basically you can point it at, at any any kind of code. Well, 
right now you can point it at Python, JavaScript, or Rust, and it's going to run all the applicable analyzers. So, ah, uh, let's see. Maybe it's just the fact that we don't have a config on this one, so... Okay, I must have missed that. Oh, no worries. Let's see. Config field. Let's see what happens. Nope. Oh, typing. Oh, wait. What am I doing? All right, okay. It's equally mad at us. That's good news. Um, let's see. So... Oh, let's see. Um, we'll just make this test pass, and then we will uh, we'll start printing shit. Use object at blah, blah, blah. Extra config. No, there's nothing there. That's in dict. Okay, logger, extra config, log. Okay, so it looks like we didn't take those. So dfml util cli uh, command. Oh, wait, you know what? It's going to be important that we set a config class here, obviously. Now let's see what happens. Targets, none. Um, default factory Okay, targets, that. All right, all right, all right. So far, so good. Except for the fact that it um, doesn't actually have any targets. So that's kind of a problem. Um, so let's see what's up with that. Example, should I test, test use? Okay, and we're doing the JavaScript one. And, okay. So, we passed in this string here as the first command, but it didn't end up in that targets array. So, it looks like we need to go through here and look at who's adding arguments where. Um, let's actually just go through and do this very, very, very hacky trick here. Will that work for us? Is that not working? Damn it. Alright, okay, fine. Oh, we have logger. Why am I doing this? Alright, um, self.logger. Uh, 
All right, uh, setting targets equals blank. Mm, well, that's unfortunate. Uh, let's see. So, so we have a list. So let's see. MKR itself. Okay, yeah. So the, is this a self situation here? Where are we at subs? Okay, not really. Um, okay. This is a fun trick. Is Fire. this using uh, uh, things from uh, should I slash project? Uh, what? Is uh, is this uh, file using uh, things from should I slash project? Mm, yes, it is. Is this the example should I use? It does import things from, or oh no, it's not using things from project. No, sorry, it's using things. Yeah, from I just Python. found out that I hadn't changed the CLF or project too. Okay, yeah, that one's that one's new too. Yeah, sorry. Um, let's see. So, okay, so let's find out what it was doing here. So it added a few arguments. Okay. Uh, there we go. So we added a few arguments here, and let's see what the hell we're adding them to. So, oh god, this is really nasty looking. Okay. Um, Okay, log, log, log. Okay, there we go. That's, I mean, it's doing it for all the things in Shaddai. So we got this MKR here on the, uh, that's obviously the right one. So um, let's see. So then we add log. So why are we ending up with log there? That's interesting because we shouldn't have had, we shouldn't, well, so it looks like there's some places where log is defined then. Um, so the classes where the where, uh, CMD uh, class is being inherited directly, uh, log is present only there. I see. Oh, okay. Only where it's being inherited directly. I see. Uh, because config equals. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see what you're saying. Makes sense. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Good, good, good. Um, so, oh, I think I know what happened is because it's, mm, let's see, oh, so, our always better be an instance of arc but let's see so if instance position otherwise added as an optional so it got added as an optional because we didn't specify position okay um let's see okay so this just sort of brings up the thing that if we have one thing we really shouldn't let's see so if we have one thing, right, so since this is the only positional, um, we shouldn't really need to say position equals zero, right, because that's just going to get, I, I now I'm seeing, I remember seeing you do position equals zero a bunch of places, so we should probably there was only one. What? There was only one argument sometimes, yeah, exactly. so I so, have to do position yeah, equal to zero. Exactly. So that's what I'm thinking here is we probably want to make it so that if there's only one thing that's, you know, not a required argument. So let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. So if it doesn't have a default, okay, so it can't have a default. That's the thing is... It can't have a default because if it doesn't have a default, then required is implicitly true. Um, so 
which means, and if required is implicitly true, then it's a positional. And if there's only one positional, okay, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So yeah, I think that's part of MK arg maybe that needs to change here is because df of model base df MK arg let's see. Because so a field without a default basically it has to be required, right? Because it's not going to be um, there's no way to there's no way to uh, metadata dot get required or not default in arg. Okay. Uh, where is this? Let's see, where is it throwing that? Required is an invalid argument for positionals. Uh, it's an arc parse error. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah, so for positionals, so, I ran into this. So this is now because. Okay, and where is this? So. Okay, this must be in. Okay, so because so what I'm saying here is basically that, um, what I'm saying is basically that we shouldn't have to specify position equals true or position equals zero. Position equals zero if there's only one thing, right? Um, actually. Let's see. Okay, that did work. Yeah, targets. Okay, we got the correct value for targets. Um, okay. Um, I guess we might just want to take this one in the next PR then because um, let's just do it one at a time. So, um, okay. Okay, and now I'm thinking, okay, so I think part of the reason why we did position was because we were going with the inheritance stuff, so we needed a way to respecify positions uh, if you were inheriting things. Or was that why? Why did we have to do position? Why did we want to do position? I think it was because originally with the arg stuff, it didn't support position. Um, and it was just sort of adding things in alphabetical order, um, but now, but then I think I think we probably should have like hmm, we probably should have looked at this um, a different way because this when we iterate over a config they're going to be in that that order right so anything that's not required will already be in its correct positional order right so if I specify targets first and then I had another thing that was positional then um, that would be, um, then that would just be the second, that would just be position equals one, right? Um, so we probably want to do this in a different PR now that we're already sort of down this route um, because we want to get this through. Uh, does that make sense, what I was saying? Okay, okay. That's my bad, I was saying. I was saying that we should do this, but now I'm realizing we don't, you know, we don't need that. We already have that information, right? Um, so let's see. Let's make a note in that issue. Um, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. So, uh, and, uh, so after we merge this, this will want to use or get rid 
uh, position and uh, because we realized that the information on position can be gotten can or is just the same as the index of the um, let's see of the uh, of the field within the config class. Um, so let's put this here too. Um, oops, oops. Okay. So let's see, position equals zero. All right, we got the right stuff. So um, let me just hack this together here real quick. So if not default in arg, Position equals um, um, Okay, let's see We can do Build up anything. Okay, I think this will do. Oops, it doesn't like my. Okay, let's go. Oh. That's why. All right, so um, okay, let's get rid of it over here. No, I didn't get it. Did it? Targets equals none. Position equals so I if not default in arg else none. Okay, but there's no default in arg. Um, so, there's no default in arg. So it was i metadata.get position. But where's position over here? Where's position? Um, metadata, or wait, that would be in def field. So position equals none. Okay, but position is already none, so that's what happened. So, so, okay, so yeah, it just sets position to none. So, so field.metadata.give position. Okay, so I see what's going on. Okay. Position none. So if i is not default. If default if not default in arg and position is none. Position equals i. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, basically it looks like it gets set to none by default, so we got to pull out that, and then if there's no default, 
or wait, equals i. Sometimes I do this. That really messes me up. I put 1 instead of i, and then it works for the first loop iteration, and then all of a sudden I start having problems. Um, okay, so then if we ended up with more things here, so if we had something like um, base, I guess we should do feed, shouldn't we? So we had feed, okay, and then it got mad because it didn't have enough arguments. Um, and now we're going to have way too many terminals open. So examples, should I test, test, CLI use? So basically, okay. So what we did is we just said, if it doesn't have a position in the metadata, use the index into this um, you know, use the index into what field number it was, right? So targets is now in position zero. So now feed should get face um, because we did that. And okay, yes. So we should end up with setting targets equals blank, setting feed equals face. Okay, so it'll grab the position there. Um, so that's good. Um, okay, let's open that up and, and remove that um, print statement there. Okay, so um, this is the positional stuff. Okay, so let's add this. Um, should I one day I'm gonna I realized I need to make a video of how I make my commits um, there's basically like a bunch of stuff with rebasing that you can do and it makes commits look really nice um, but yeah I'll, I'll have to make a video someday um, so examples should I um, oh yeah so uh, use new config CLI uh, and then get diff, so add git commit, sorry, git. So let's add this. So basically what we did here, right, was we just made it so that um, until CLI command, so extrapolate uh, position if not uh, given based off of based off field index get push okay so let's see let's take a look at some of those other oh shit I just pushed that so it's gonna fuck up all the fucking CI again. okay um, do you remember where some of the other issues were? Because um, now I just wiped uh, out that CLI. Service HTTP. In service HTTP. All right, let's go take a look. Uh, also, that cargo is, uh, cargo test failing is not related to the CLI, right? Uh, I don't think so. No, let's see. Um, we'll take a look. Um, but the should I ones are finicky because they rely on uh oh. Um, they rely on all sorts of external services providing vulnerability information. Okay, no, okay, here we go. Missing type object is not iterable. Wonderful. Um, well, let's run just one of these damn commands, huh? Test record. Um, let's see. Um, missing type object is not iterable. Damn, I can't run my stupid Windows machine. It won't let me scoot things over with Tmux. It's annoying. Um, I can't resize the windows. Let's see. Okay. Um, service HTTP diff. Well, service HTTP roots. Or let's go to CLI. It's probably not in roots, huh? Okay, um, 
and we are looking at okay cores command okay and it looks like sources is also ending up as missing so let's see what happened here ah okay um default factory sources okay so this is going to be a problem um so let's just do list um okay well and this one is just as suspiciously the same so let's see um sources configured to start Models configured to start. So we just, uh, oh yeah, do those need to be sources? Okay, let's see. Um, missing type, missing type. This is ridiculous. Come on now. Why is it doing this to us? Um, diff, mural, util, CLI, uh, command. Okay, let's do our little trick here that we did last time. So. Um, print. Ooh, we're going to get a lot of log output. Arg. File consists.std out. Or wait. Error. Um. Okay, that didn't result in printing anything, which is concerning. Um. So, config equals server config. Um, hmm, let's see. What could be happening here? Um, what is going on? Okay, so it got some of them, which is even funnier. Um, okay, but it's not printing this, which is interesting. Um, This is very interesting. Okay, I guess the next question is how are we running this test here? So, so yeah, obviously, right. So it looks like right now we're at a point where cores domain and sources, the ones that have been set to um, The ones that have been set to those custom list types are not getting what they want. Um, setting server key, ignored upload or ignored static, ignored JS, which means they were already set usually is what that means. So this is test, test. Uh, test roots. Okay, my um, guess is it has something to do with how we're starting this. Test roots running. Okay. Um, test roots running. Oh, um, okay, that's interesting. So, because we're actually just instantiating the class itself, um, all right, so we, okay, so we're hitting this block here. And so we're not going to hit that CLI parsing stuff. Okay, and I'm seeing some default. Okay, it looks like a lack of default factory. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, let's do... Okay, yeah, so... Okay, looks looks good now. All right, okay, so it looks like the issue there was basically... Okay, let's stop those print statements. That's annoying as all hell. Okay, yeah, so the issue there looks like it was with the fact that we were checking for default and not default factory. Um, and... Oh, okay. And for some reason, it let you do async context manager list as a default, but not. Um, what? That's weird. That's a mutable type. Why is it letting you do that? Now it doesn't like it. Mutable default. The other one's mutable too. Um, that's weird. Because usually it makes you do default factory when... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what the hell is going on here? Out of curiosity. Uh, 785. No, it only... It only checks if it's a list dict or set. So it's not, this is like a very minimal amount of like, okay, so this is like, the point of this is to help people from not shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, which is sort of what I thought it was, but like, it's, that's dumb. Um, okay. Is that data classes dot pi? Yeah, this is data classes dot pi. Yeah, so this is here. I've just stopped looking in that. Yeah. <laughs> there's no solution there ever. There's no what? You can't change stuff there, so Yeah, no right. Yeah. Wasting time there. Uh huh. Yeah, I I I end up I feel like I all too often end up rummaging through there trying to figure out what the hell are they doing. Um so well this is this is interesting. I mean it doesn't really matter, see that's all well and good. It just doesn't really matter for us in our use case because we're converting them to arg and like I guess we won't have to convert them to arg. Like we don't need to do this anymore now that everything is field, but I think I think we'll probably still keep it because it provide we've got all the infrastructure set up around it. Um but yeah, the um like when we do MK arg, we just call data or we call default factory right so we're always ending up with a with a new a new instance so we don't modify the the default itself um because the reason why so the reason why they're they're talking about this is um do you guys do you guys do you guys understand why let me let me just go over this real quick so um uh, um or all okay. right. Um, yeah, let's just talk about this real quick because this is something good to cover. Um, oops. All okay, right. So, um, Okay. Okay. This is why. Um, because if we initialize this, so the reason why we do default factory and we have a function return the thing is because if I have a, if I have like this list here is actually a global variable, right? So it's the same as doing list equals this and then a equals list 
because Python is, you know, one of these, it's like JavaScript in that it's, it has a bunch of pointers under the hood, if you guys are familiar with C, but, you know, um, they have a bunch of pointers under the hood um, for all of these objects. Um, and so like a list and a dict and a set and a tuple and, and most most things and, and any sort of object is actually going to be passed by reference um, or passed by, like you can think of it being passed by a pointer or passed by reference if you're familiar with C++, um, which means that you're actually modifying the same thing every time. It's not actually going to create a new instance of this stuff. And so that's why it's enforcing... That's why data classes that PY is enforcing that thing with with you know no mutable default values. Um, you need to put it in a data class factory or a default. You need to put it in a default factory because then it'll instantiate a new version every time. So if you've seen this pattern here, um, so you you probably have seen this around DFFML, and you've, if you aren't seeing this, we need to fix it. Um, then um, so we end up with. Uh -oh. Did I, am I muted? Can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, we can okay. hear you. I don't know what happened there. So if you see this pattern, now you understand what this is, right? So because we're doing... Um, so this is... This is provide this gives us behavior that we're not expecting because we're actually modifying this global value every time. This gives us the behavior that we're expecting because we're reinitializing the list to the same thing. And so that's sort of the default factory, right? It's doing the same sort of thing. Um, um, so let's see what's up here. Uh, I'm test. Okay, so... Uh, all right, and um, so you tell CLI command, um, and then this is a uh, field name, so basically, um, uh, use arg default to ensure we have uh, we also use default factory of field okay all right um let's see um were there any other ones you can remember damn it i just pushed again i should have looked at the damn ci <sighs> okay were there yeah, any the other ones you pushed uh, models were failing. Okay, models said. were failing. Okay, yeah, it looks like it's not happy here, huh? Um, oh, hey. Oh, my gosh, look at this. I didn't know you could do this. I did not know you could do this. This is exciting. Okay, I always lose the last CI ring, and I didn't know I could be choosing it. Okay, so this one. Wow, this is great. I just saved myself a lot of time learning about that. Um, so all the models are failing. Um, so they got mad about something with regards to positional arguments. Um, required is in... Oh, I added that. I didn't mean to add that part. Um, so let's see. Um, huh. Maybe, did I add that right? I thought I didn't add that. Oh, maybe it's because it's... it's yeah. Okay, it's adding a position now. Um, for ones that say required. So let's see. Okay, so... Position equals... Let's see. Okay. 
Okay, yeah, so we can get rid of these guys. So, sources to pull records from. Okay, so. This equals next file. Okay. Default, default. Okay. Position equals. Okay, we get rid of that. The other ones have default. That one has default. That one has default. That one has default. That one has default. We can remove required. Okay, let's see. Remove required. From anything that has default. 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 Great. Oops, wait, I'm not done checking. And more position, more position, defaults, defaults done. Okay. Now oh, port, we really need to get rid of port. It's kind of useful, I think, but eh, maybe not, who knows. Oh, shit, god damn, what's the last one? All right, now let's try this. Um, uh, uh, have you run the tests? Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's run the tests. Let's do it like this first to see what's up. Okay. Okay, required is an invalid argument for positional. Sorry, right, now, now we got to go through and do required, huh? Okay, let's see. Or did it get... Wait, this is not, sources is never, sources ever used as a positional, where the hell is that coming from? Oh uh, yeah, in uh, data flow, there, I have written a to-do there, where there was a modifier, right? Do you, do you remember that dot modifier required equal to false? Um, dot modify. We took the sources from, uh, sources arc from uh, sources CMD. Uh huh. All right. So where is and, this? Uh, it's in data flow merge, I think. Okay. Data flows. Um, in here or uh, you in? can search for the to do there. I have written a to do. Okay. Ah, I see. Okay. Required equals false for sources here. Run command. I see, I see. Okay. Um, um, okay, what's this one handle this? Okay. Pre previously, uh, what, the, what the it was modify. like... Yes, dot modifier. Okay, so let's but do... now it's not a dictionary, so we can't do dot modifier. Yeah, so let's do um, uh, let's just add this, and then let's see um, base. All right, here's field. Uh, 
Let's see. <laughs> okay. Dot replace. What we'll do is let's just do this. Field replace. Um All right, do we have funk tools? We do have funk tools, wonderful. Okay, so, um, what we'll do is we'll just say, okay, and then all those things, uh, let's see. Metadata, metadata, let's see, action, action required position labeled metadata. Okay, so replace. So we can just make a method here that'll be like um, something like, uh, you know, we'll try to copy the data classes sort of style thing. So we can just say field replace um, and then return new field. Um, and then you can do this dot get, so bind bind method to instance of field bind so we take this function so we take take find re field replace function and make it a bound method to the new instance of fields. So a bound method is going to be uh, um, does that work? Um, sorry, one second. What test was failing? Let's just do this one. Or we can do this one. It doesn't really matter. Okay, field object has no attribute replace. Um, okay, but this is for field Why Does it not have attribute replace? Um, let's see. Um, Let's see. Uh, field replace that get new field new field. Um, guys, yeah, Himachi, you don't just if you if you don't you don't have to stay on. I just I hope you, you don't have to stay on if you want. Um, just because I, I don't want you to feel compelled to stay. Um, I know I'm sure you have other things to do, but I you know if if this is interesting to you, then that's great too. Yeah, yeah, oh. I'm looking few things. Though I will go after some time. Cool. So we have to do like something like class method. Uh, well, this is an instance method. Um, because let's see. It should be. Let's see. It should be an instance method, but maybe I'm wrong. Because we have an instance of field, right? Yeah. No, clear the screen. I hate it when we don't clear the screen. Okay, so... And it's mad at us here, so... Um,
Okay, so it's a instance of the field class. Um, field object has no attribute replace. New field dot replace equals. It really doesn't like that. Oh, well, fuck you. We'll use set atcher. Can't complain about that. Um, usually. Field has no attribute replaced. Wow, it really doesn't like us trying to do this. Um, uh, well, we can just make a new method then. Um, well, no, we can't because we need to store this information somewhere. So um, maybe we should just uh, maybe we should just give up on this right for now. We could just redefine it. You know, uh, we might be running into that thing basically again. where we're trying to do something that we should just give up on. <laughs> um, let's see, so field sources, sources and CLI. Yeah, okay. So yeah, this is a case where required is definitely equals to true. Um, yeah, but this, this pull request only. has made me not like data classes that <laughs> I know, yeah, there's some not they're they're not as great as they could be, that's for sure. They're good, but they're not perfect. Um let's just yeah. say fuck it on this one and uh and just copy paste. Um because yeah, I think this might be this is this is looking like a, a situation where uh, we may not beat data classes, huh? Um, just like last time yeah exactly you know we're trying to make it do thing we're trying to make it more user friendly than it is because we're running into the fact that it's not as user friendly as we'd like right and so i think yeah. that's causing us problems um let's see um Yeah, it definitely could be better. It's like it's good for what it does, but yeah, who knows? Um, that's why. That's also why we're wrapping everything with config and field. So if we wanted to switch from data classes to something else at some point, um, we'll just toss that right, and we can we we just already have, um, um, you know, like we. Um, if we wanted to switch at some point, we could, uh, because we're wrapping everything. We aren't usually we aren't like we're abstracting the usage of data class, um, so we may yeah. run into that. Okay, so <coughs> sorry. So required equals false for data close here. So okay, so just required equal. Okay, yeah. So that will end up with required equals false. So run command takes the data flow. Yes, it's going to be required because um, it's positional um, config is this should probably be um, a default um, um, oh this is gonna be so great to have this all the same and then the next thing that we'll do is we'll basically rip out the class methods of uh, arg and config and with config to completely separate configuration from the actual instances themselves uh, required equals false okay so but what is let's see what is our actual default um, config loader here okay self.config So, okay, so I guess it's none. And 
this case. Okay, it's still mad at us. Where, where are you mad at us? What is going on? Um, and it's happening with data flow diagrams. So required equals. Okay, we're going to get rid of all these requireds. Okay. Default, so it's not okay. Configurator used for importing data flow. So this is probably a default equals none situation and that's going to be position zero oops oops oh that was what I wanted oh great we're searching for the world data flow okay so let's try this again equals false, default equals false. Those are all not positionals. This one will end up with default equals false. Where is it getting it from? Let's just add a print statement and then we'll know right away. Okay, so vim diff mal util cli command. Um, This is on 281. model and this has to do with what now accuracy is that really what it's complaining about so dfml cli ml model Oh, model command config. We should probably ditch this stuff. Required equals true. Okay. Um, there we go. Model used for ML. Okay. JSON source is not defined. All right, we're making progress now. Um, see the data flow. So we won't need required anywhere now. Um. Yeah, because either it's a positional. I mean, so. The one time you need required is if it doesn't have a default and it shouldn't be, well, okay. So if it doesn't have a default, so if you want to make something, um, if you want to make something that, that would have a dash in front of it, something that always has to be specified, then you need to say required because it won't have a default and therefore it's not going to be a positional it's going to assume that it's a positional unless it has a default right um and if it has a default but you for some reason want to make a dash something that's like something that starts with a dash or required thing for that command line argument you're gonna then have to specify required equals true um okay. And I don't really know of any cases right now where this is the case. I think there was something at some point where we were specifying sources always, but I think we have that default source. Um, so I'm not sure if that's really... Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's really necessary at this point. I think we might be sort of past that. Um, 
I think I think yeah. I don't know if if uh, if that's ever gonna if we're ever gonna hit that case. Um, file source config. Oh, we don't need that anymore. Oh, and this should probably be. Did yeah, somebody uh, yeah, change this to. I think somebody changed this to support pathlib.path, .path, though. Um, oh, shit, and there it is again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, so we've got something going on here. Um, let's see. Um, I think somebody changed that to support pathlib.path. .path. Let's just check real quick. Okay, yes. Sudarsana did. Okay, um, required is in right now. Um, oh, there must have changed this recently. Uh, this is an old PR. Yeah, yeah. But there have been a lot of recent changes that affect this one. Add subs. Definition to use for record key. Okay, so uh, yeah, I noticed uh, you have you didn't remove required for the keys in oh. cmds dot Ah, thank you. Oh, okay, so, and this is another thing, is I'm thinking we might want to get rid of this, or, well, let's see, model command, I don't know if we're ever going to hit this case anymore here, because um, that was for instantiating the config from the, or, yeah, this is the other thing. So, another thing that we're going to need to do here is basically... And this is where we may ditch data classes, is that, so, or maybe this is specific to CLI stuff. Uh, we're going to have to do, so this is like a big part of doing the unified config, what we're doing right now. But to, to really, like, to really get everything together, right, you know, there's these with config, there's that with config method in base. Um and it basically goes and it grabs through the dictionary that it's provided and it grabs like it does the same thing well it's this with config method and and so anything that that the command line stuff doesn't parse like the the classes go down and down and down in levels and try to grab their their correct arguments like as so that you can nest everything forever um and so ideally we'd pull those that sort of logic out of the classes themselves but i don't i don't know if it's going to be possible um, because they contain info the classes themselves contain information on um on what their sort of like what their type is right because we have so we have the class and it's a source right and then it's a json source but maybe I've labeled that JSON source because maybe I have two JSON sources that I'm using in this command, right? In which case, then I needed to label them one and two, right? And then I have dash source, dash one, dash file name, and dash source, dash two, dash file name. Or if I wanted to set, like, or like if I, if I had multiple sources that weren't labeled, or for example, take, say for example that I have two JSON sources and I want to make them read write. Well, I would say source JSON read write, and then both source one and source two would now get read write enabled. And maybe we just want to throw this functionality out. Um, but it's something that yeah, we're going to have to think about. Maybe we don't want both of them to be yeah. right. Yeah, because you either label them or you don't label them. And if you label them, then you might as well. Because like when we do blank equals whatever the plugin type is. Like that would be labeling them, right? 
And so, yeah, I don't know. We're going to need to figure that out because I really don't think it makes sense to have these class met. The problem is we're, having them as class method ties these config structures into the classes, right? And it would be better if the config structures themselves were sort of like on their own because they're completely serializable at this point and that's a very attractive quality because we can send them to different threads and we can send them across the network and uh, so all of the state is sort of uh, you know managed within the class and then the config is its own thing which lets us you know instantiate these objects wherever um, but sorry I got down a tangent there but I wanted to, to sort of let you know what I was thinking with that and everything works um, so, because yeah, I just feel like this is not the cleanest way that it could be right now. Um, so let's give it another little run through here of the whole thing and then we'll push it on up. Uh oh. Uh, oh great. What's going on here? Well, we just changed, what did, what did we just change? So data flow, it's not stuff in data flow, so let's commit that separately. Um, what was that we fixed there? I think it was the, oh yeah. Okay, um, and then... Okay, um, somehow the file name became true, or became a POSIX path that is just set to true. So what the hell happened there? Um, um, my guess is it's from whatever we just did. Where we had, where did that go? Yeah, this guy. So, JSON source, file name, test train. Oh, why did you remove the file source config? I didn't get that. Uh, which one? In uh, that in that part only, the JSON source. Oh, part. it was complaining just that it didn't exist. Um, and so I removed it because you can instantiate them without passing their configs. If you just pass keyword arguments, it'll just grab the config and then instantiate the config with its defaults. So we didn't, it, rather than importing a thing that wasn't necessary, I just got rid of it um, because it's going to instantiate the correct config for whatever you pass it to. Okay. Um, so, so... Now our problem is with this. Um, okay, so div mail source file. So let's see, you got any ideas on what this might be? Uh, I think it's, uh, file. I think if we add file source config, might okay. Might yeah. Okay. So let's let's just go change that back then. Uh, where was that? That was in. file source config yeah okay well we'll just leave it like that um, okay so 
let's go look at this command that we're running because it looks like we're running the ML commands. Um, okay. Oh. Okay, so we have sources command and model command, but the problem is, okay, well, so ML model, I think we need to set config equals ML command config, um, because or else one of those is going to take precedence. Um, or, well, I guess you set them all here. So... Um, okay. Um, it's accuracy. Well, it has to do with a file source being configured incorrectly. So we have logging on, we don't. First step. Okay, so file name equals that. JSON source config. True. Okay, where the hell did that come from? Um, well, here's the file source config that we're looking at. Like, there's that default one. Entering JSON source file name post path true. I think this might be an issue with that patch. Uh, no, maybe not. Um, let's see. Yeah, it might be an issue with that patch. MDF or because what did we do? We changed it to pathlib.path. .path. Let's change it back. That's probably the problem. Yeah. I bet you that'll do it. No? Hmm. Okay, so it's getting true for some reason um, as a POSIX path. So, sources Okay. Oh, is it because so run command config or wait this is in data flow, so this isn't even the same thing. So this, because we're looking in the ML commands. So, and this is uh, back. Can you check the CMDS.5? Yeah. It's taking the source from there. Okay, so sources sources command it's taking from field sources here you mean or yeah in the uh, where the field sources oh, yeah. uh, is config slash fields oh config slash fields that's right okay so File source config. Hmm. And this is the, this is the ML command. Sources command comes from field sources. Okay, let's look at this test case. Test 
CLI. Test accuracy. And then, so this is an ignored sources, ignored model. Right, setting sources equals uh, accuracy. Setting sources equals JSON source setting. So yeah, entering. So where did it get that fucking file name of true from? I'm not seeing that anywhere. Hmm. Uh, can you recheck the test case? Maybe that's where that's where something is happening. So. Let's print before and after. So test run. Okay. Await accuracy. Okay, in test run 379. 379, so it's, the, it's running this command. It goes into accuracy CLI. Um, and... Um, okay, it enters the sources. I wonder... I wonder if we did... Um, I wonder if we just did, you know, our own... Like, if we, if we made a new one here, like, class, accuracy config, if it's an issue with the inheritance... You know, so model equals um, model field model to use, and then sources equals sources field um, sources to use, and then default equals sources and we'll just have it be like this for now and see what happens so from different from data Yeah, no such file directory, POSIX path, true. Okay, so there's got to be something going on with the source file name config. Um... Uh, did you change the uh, config is equal to accuracy config in accuracy class? Oh, did I? I might not have. Well, okay. So here's right. the thing, though, is the issue is with the file name. So the issue is deeper than... Um, it's deeper than that first level on the CLI command. Um, right, because we're getting true here so uh, yes right and self dot file name okay uh, first open stem file. test accuracy oh yeah thank you So here's the file name. So it's definitely not true. So something, for some reason, something is evaluating it to be true. So we probably want to look in base, actually. Um, uh, def 
um, let's see. So we want to look at um, config file name, or let's see, base configurable, the init method here. So let's just see like what is getting passed, or we need to look at like this issue is sort of deep. Um, args config. Okay, let's print the config here. Okay, so file name, true. Yeah, okay, so it's here. Um, so what happened in here? So data classes dot config. Okay, build the arguments to the config class. Field dot name with config. Okay, class dot config dot git. Or so let's see, let's config git. Um, and my guess is maybe the MKR got off. Maybe MKR gets off. Let's see. Let's see what MKR is doing because I don't think we've modified any of that code, right? Uh, yeah, we haven't modified that. Yeah, so it has to be something that's happening in MKR. Um, Okay, so, and then we should say, we're looking for file name here. So, file name type cluster, file name type cluster, file name cluster. Um, all of that looks good. Sources. Model file name type cluster type cluster yeah all that looks good what in the hell is going on here um I guess the other thing to check is what is it as it exists in um so let's see the the question is sort of what does um what does the um, config structure look like? So, so what does it look like as it's coming in? Um, so, yes, okay. Plugin is true. Something's wrong here. Okay, so. Yeah, something's wrong here. You see what I'm seeing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the file name became true somehow. So, and that's before we even got here. Um. So source file name. So we have sources. Then we have source file name. So how did this happen? Um. Let's see. Um, well, do you want to sort of take this and then chew on it some more, or you want to do you want to spend more time on it now? Well, I can look at it later. Okay, cool. I just realized it's probably getting late for you there. So yeah, um, it's almost twelve. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, why don't we take this and we'll just say that you know we've got this is the issue right now um and then you can sort of you can you can run to the end of the recording and and pick up where we left off here but so let's okay. see where we where we're at with the rest of this um uh, i think besides this uh only the last thing that's left is it's not running nor uh, the tests are not running normally yeah and i suspect that once we get everything cleaned up to this point. So the other thing that I think we should do is we should get rid of any inheritance that's still going on. So um, like everything in commands, util commands, we should probably just not be using that stuff, right? We should make sure everything has its own config class because um, then it's right there, right? The class using it and the config for it is, is right next to each other. Um, 
And then I think, you, because I think that having that clarity will help us um, figure out what the hell this issue is uh, or get rid of it. Because I don't, I don't think uh, that this I is going to be. I didn't get what you meant by uh, not uh, so in the util Okay. Um, Hello. Can yeah, sorry. Me? Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Okay, sorry. I was, my mic looked like it wasn't. It wasn't saying anything. Okay. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Config. Uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so anything where we're having multiple, like, yeah, like this, this kind of inheritance stuff of commands with configs, I think we should probably get rid of. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll leave it for now. Maybe we should just leave it for now. Yeah, I guess let's just leave it for now. If it's working, it's it's working, so that's good. Um, yeah, so let's just try to get this this issue sorted out, whatever this is going on here. Um, and let's see, get the status. So let's um, uh, um, is there any changes there? Okay. So let's, and then let's see if that's still the same issue. Okay, so you want me to push the merge master too? It looks like that's there's... fine. I, I'll, I'll see you. Too. Okay, cool. Um, sweet. All right, yeah, I guess, uh, my guess is it has to do with the action. Um, something's messing up the action or something because, or else it wouldn't store true, right? Um, or else the other thing I would take a look at is um, the arguments that are getting added. Um, just take a look at, at, at the add argument stuff again and make sure it all looks right. Um, um, but yeah. Okay, okay. Cool. All right. Good luck. Thank you very much. Um, so sorry, sorry for taking a bunch of your time, but I think it's good that we, we debug. So. Yeah, it's good. Uh, we've made some progress here. Yeah, that was some progress. It's close to getting more. Yes, yeah, it's, it's almost done. This is going to be really great to have everything be the same, <laughs> the same sort of thing. It's going to be awesome. All yeah. right. Thanks, Saksham. Also, uh, thank you. Uh, also, that uh, you talk, uh, you talked about uh, last in the last meeting. You talked about that issue of normalizes normalizing oh, yeah. images. Mm -hmm. uh, Did you see so that one that I posted? That yeah, uh, that is a completely fine uh, uh, command. But the thing is that when we do source images data flow and then we uh, uh, pass it normalized .yaml. Mm -hmm. So here we are not uh, using a config loader in data flow source. Uh, yeah. That's, that's why I took the different route for edit also. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um... Maybe okay. we need to add that. Then we'll have to also. We'll also we have need to, to the yeah. We need to figure that out. And so I think, but that's also part of this sort of the unified config thing, is that when I was talking about taking out with config and that kind of stuff, we need to have a way to say this thing supports config loaders or something, or like. I'm not sure what that will be. It might be something at the class level, and this is why I said it's kind of hard to separate the classes from the configs at some level because they know things about each other. Um, maybe, um, maybe we add it. It's probably just something. It's something we need to add to the type information itself, right? So if we say that the type, right, when we have data flow colon and then you know caps data flow. It's something that has to be in that type information. So if we look in that, that we say, what's the annotation, right? We need that, the, whatever the data type is, so data, the data uh, flow uh, class to say, I support config loaders or something, right? 
we can add something like a config flag in dataflow source in dataflow source um so if we have given a config flag then it will take a look if it's a file name then it will load it oh yeah mm. so i i agree but i think that that would be more of a short term solution what i'm saying is that we need to modify the like the in base we need to modify those methods to say if you see a type that says i support config loaders and it's not a complete type right so if for example like if you see if we see um data flow uh um so let's see do flow base so def um git config or, or config git so this guy right this is actually what goes and pulls out the right value and converts it and everything right um, so yeah, convert value, I guess would be what it is. So in convert value, we need something that says, um, yeah, so if type in arg, so we probably need something here that says like if type, because type is going to be right. So in this case, we have, uh, arg, right, where, um, name is, data flow and uh, type is data flow right um, oh yes yeah df well, dot df dot types dot data flow right and so if we give if within data flow um, we have um, some property that says like uh, config loadable equals true um, then we could do something here where we said you know if has atter config loadable um, or get atter config loadable um, then we you know do config loader stuff okay okay right and that way any class right because we're going to run into this multiple times right so we probably want this to be something that we can say you know toggle on and off at the class level that's being loaded to say i support this or i don't support this um yeah because uh, if we are using the data flow from data flow source mm -hmm. then in in command line we'll always want to do a config we'll always want to do config loading yeah yeah exactly right and so if we integrate this into convert value now we now we can remove all that config loader code from other places um so okay, and I did see to do. okay does that that make sense now yeah 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 the yeah. one exception to this is going to be the commands that um that like there are some where we say um like uh so yeah the exception to this is going to be basically if you see well i don't know maybe so right now we have a few commands that say dev st standard in right dev std in and we do some piping of data flows and then you specify config because it can't extrapolate the typing or it can't figure out what config loader to use based off of the file extension because there is no file extension so what we might do for that is another common thing that people do is we could say okay if the file name equals dev standard in um then like we just try all the config loaders or if the file name equals uh dash like a single hyphen then we just try all the file loaders or, or all the config loaders right um and whatever one works works if not it doesn't work um but that's sort of like that that we may need, may need to retain that functionality um, to specify the config loader. So, but for the most part, this will probably solve the problem, right? Okay. Cool. Thanks for bringing that up. That's a good good point. All right. Well, have a good night, um, and I will. Uh, I'll see you. See you around. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dr. Sham. Have a good one. Bye. Okay. Bye.